I think the nature of the human animal is transition. Breath is a great example of that. A breath is a transition. Bringing in to letting go, the inhale to exhale, the inspiration to the expiration. And we're live. Chris Keener, he's in the building. The man, the myth, the legend. I'm so stoked you're here right now. How's it going, man? Happy Thursday. Yeah, happy Thursday indeed. It's a fine happy Thursday. I find myself, the building I'm in is actually on a lake, Lake Ontario, where I've never actually spent much time here before, on one of the great lakes. So I'm seeing, they call it lake eyes, which is relevant to my work, which is when you stare out at the lake enough, you get what's known as lake eyes, which is like that thousand yard gaze a gaze of a meditative gaze of looking out at the lake all the time so i'm trying to take that on trying to get some lake eyes in some areas in lake ontario like right around the coast it can get really aggressive like hardcore like the wind can get pretty nuts there right causing some pretty massive waves yeah there, there's there's surfers here i mean there's people that surf the i'm still waiting to see that i haven't seen that yet but i also wasn't here in the dead of winter so I believe it. <laughs> you know, Chris, I was, I went through YouTube and I was looking at, because actually I was looking for one of your breath work sessions and I was hoping to, to be able to have you guide me in my living room, but I didn't find anything on YouTube. Just a quick check, maybe something in the future, but uh, I was looking <laughs> at your, some stuff in the works. I was looking at your old stuff and you have these really creative videos about, and one I was watching, what do comedians think about before they go on stage? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we I, I did it you know I'm a filmmaker it was is my other profession I've been a filmmaker for 20 some years and um and that was a cool gig where we got to work with a bunch of you know top comedians and do I just I had this gig in DC where I'd go we, there was this comedy festival and we'd always get to make stuff with the comedians and as they were up and coming you know and now they're all you know blown up stars but that's kind of it's my other life. So actually now I'm trying to merge the two worlds and bring some content, some breathwork content into the world. And, and it's cool to put on my filmmaker hat sometimes and, and think about that. So that's starting to happen more and more. It gave me a lot more context to how you do what you do because you have this background in, in comedy, right? You have a comedic side to you, right? And you're able to combine breathwork and make it so light and friendly and goofy and fun and uplifting and it seems to marry perfectly into your past like how you've become where you're at because i mean i've been in through several breathwork sessions before and meditations and such and i know we're going to get into the difference between the two but i have never been to something as joyful as the experience the audio experience that you did when at the at the event we did with um what was the event called it was uh the murmur event not it wasn't the murmur one it was the no phones brick oh brick yeah the event. brick event yeah right on man that that thing was great the sleepover yeah the sleepover and then like yeah. once you're into it once you're doing these deep breaths all of a sudden you put on this like tribal like land, like kingdom come type music like i, <laughs> I feel like simba's about to bust through the wall and say what up to me I, you're so excited and it, it's truly your work is very reflective in your passion and how you teach. Well, thanks, man. Yeah, it, it, you know, it, uh, I had like a life reinvention in my late 30s, which is, you know, you, you hit this place where you're like, all right, I've done some cool stuff in film. I've, I've had like a cool career and, and what else? And what else? And how else can I express this thing? And there's a great uh, book called uh, What Is Your Why? This is Simon Sinek's work. I don't know if you're familiar with Simon Sinek. Yep. Yeah. And, and so I was doing some of that work, looking into what my why is. And sure enough, there was this, this thing about guiding people through experiences of, of great humanity, be that joy, be that, um, you know, I did a lot of filmmaking that was, to, you know, in developing world in Africa, where it was very much very sensitive and very heartfelt heartstrings kind of material. But basically, like shepherding people through impactful experiences of humor and heart. And those are my things like humor and heart, like if I can convey that in everything I do. And so breathwork showed up as this venue to do that. 
where I had like, you know, built in, I don't just call them audience. It's really like a, you know, a community, a group doing this together. But in some ways it definitely scratches that like audience itch of, of, of taking people through a, an experience spinning a yarn, you know what I mean? And so I'm glad you picked up on that. Cause I do feel, I feel like I'm fully activated in terms of, I can be funny. I can be, you know, weepy. I can kind of let it all, let it all rip. Because it's a little weird when you're in a group with a bunch of strangers and you're sitting there and you're like deep breathing. Like, <gasps> <sighs> yeah, It's just like a very odd scenario. You're like looking yeah. to your left and right and everyone's just full fledged primal. And it's like for you to be able to walk people through that and not feel weird and just let it all out. That's a gift. Oh, thanks, man. And it's a gift to get it back. I mean, to see it's so gratifying to see people growling like maniacs and cave people and to you know see people's hands tweak out and screaming and crying and laughing and yeah i mean it's epic like the the it, I, I can think of no honestly i have the best job in the world i do feel that like it's just bonkers to see that the human experience that goes on in a in a deep breath work session it's and, the, and, and the, the best line that describes it is you're getting high off your own supply <laughs> yeah <laughs> For sure, man. I'm a pusher. I'm a pusher. <laughs> man, yeah. Putting a lot of people off the street because you're just, you can do it at home. And that's why I'm so fascinated to jump into this episode. And, and guys, for the audience listening in right now, I mean, this, I want you to really turn, like, just take in what Chris is talking about. Because if you implement breath work into your life, it's revolutionary in every way, shape, or form. And I'm excited to learn more. And I, I, know, I said one thing to you that is almost offensive to gurus in your land and expertise of breath work. I compared meditation with breath work and basically said they're the same thing. And you're like, no, 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 no. Can you explain what the difference <laughs> is between the two? That's my guru finger. I wave my guru finger at you. <laughs> um, yeah, sure. Well, breath work is certainly a kind of, you know, it can be a kind of meditation. A breath work is also a, a, a way into meditation. Breath work is really, you know, any way in which you're using your own breath, um, you are working consciously with your breath. You're just becoming aware of your breath and breathing in a certain way. Uh, pranayama is a 5,000 year old word for it. And, you know, there's many types of, of breath work. There's many kinds of breath work. There's breath work that can leave you activated, inspirited and, and joyful and uppity. And there's breath work that can calm you down and put you in a very placid state, put you to sleep. Um, and so that's all under the you know umbrella of breath work meditation you know i like to think of it as yoga originally was you know the purpose of yoga was to get the body prepared for meditation to to go into a meditative state where the body is still and you can travel in the mind and breath work in a way is is much the same it's like a prep a way to prepare the mind for meditation or a way into a meditative state so i often do breath work paired with meditation and breath work is a way into a meditation and the breath work in itself is meditation in that you are you are very much in your own headspace and you're very much um processing your own internal life as as you <laughs> as you experience the breath it it also is embodied it's also physically you're doing something you're focused on something and so you know even meditation you 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 think about traditional meditation and you are focusing on your breath right so there's always some element of breath work and in, in the meditation i guess the difference is you are actually um you're leveraging your breath in a certain way you're activating it consciously and purposefully Interesting. Can you expand a little bit more on that? Yeah, sure. So um, I feel like you, you know, what I didn't get when I first, you know, when I was met, I, I meditated for years before I found breath work proper. And, and I would, I would passively observe my breath as it came and went. And some of that can be very difficult for people. A lot of people are, you know, we're, our minds are racing these days. We have a limited attention span. We got a lot of energy running through us. We have a lot that our eyes are doing at any given moment, the visual stimula stimulation, the social stimulation. So when we sit down to be quiet and listen to our breath, um, 
you know, it's like a Ferrari parked in a, out front of a, you know, ice cream shop. It's like, we, we we're, there's, <laughs> that's probably the, I don't know how what kind of metaphor that is. <laughs> Point being, there's, there's like a ton of energy there. And then we're, we're trying to make it dead still all of a sudden. And there's a gear that needs to be, or for me, that is most welcome, which is a transitional, a transition that can happen. Breathwork to me is a great way to transition from the noisiness of this world to a place of inner calm, to a place of listening to myself, to listening to the within. And so it's like, instead of going from zero to 60 instantly, you can kind of work with the breath to get you there. So I find that after I do a breathwork session, my meditation, I drop quite deeply into meditative states and I can meditate, you know, I know there's no right and wrong way to meditate, but it certainly feels like I am fully present in my meditations after a nice breath work. You know, we, I had this one guest on Rose, Rosalia Heenan and she actually did a two year, two years of silence mm. studying with monks and just being full-fledged not speaking for two years meditating deep in her breath and she said that she's actually possibly going to do it for another possible even longer in the future mm. and it blew my mind i mean obviously first of all like wait whoa 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 whoa, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> right right but i mean this woman's outstanding her company's amazing she lives and breathes like what she does and she's so enthralled by just being inside of her own head like that and it just makes me think when I hear somebody doing that, I'm like, what am I missing? What, what, do, what do they know that I am not realizing, right? Yeah. And that's what I see a lot in you with how you approach this. So tell me about how when you get into these deep states, could you just stay in that state for like very long periods of time? Um, I think the nature of, of the human animal is transition. I think we're always, you know, breath is a great example of that. A breath is a transition. It's from bringing in to letting go, the inhale to exhale, the inspiration to the expiration. And so, no, I don't think I could stay there forever. And that's, that's kind of the beauty of it. It's like a reminder that life is fleeting. And, you know, I think someone like, this woman you're talking about that's incredible and and she's she's you know gleaned an ability to of stasis to be in a, a state for a long period of time and i imagine she suffers quite a deal in doing so and um and comes out stronger i mean no doubt she sounds like she's a strong incredible woman um i, I for for me the the what I love about breathwork is to be aware of the transitions, to be when you are breathing heavily, when you are, you know, breathing fully, the, the, there's nothing but transition. You are observing the coming and going so much. You're in that process of flow. You're almost like putting yourself in a natural cycle, a tidal cycle or the cycles of the moon or so many cycles we have on this planet. And, and you feel that you are a wave and you feel that you are part of the all. And so what becomes steady, what becomes constant is the change and the ability to be with the flowiness, the ability to sail your boat in the seas and, and to change with the winds and tack with the winds. And so um, that's the comfort that I've found. The comfort that I've found is a comfort with transition as opposed to, um, you know, being completely still there there's some part of me that works with the energy and then you find stillness again afterwards it's a great way into stillness and so can sit still for quite some time afterwards yes but can, can you years, not yet man <laughs> oh yeah i know bonkers right can you kind of yes. explain what people can expect if they practice breath work and they you know do it for as long as you've done it what type of emotions and feelings they can awaken inside of their own body yeah, sure. Um, so it's really limitless. I mean, I keep hearing more anecdotally just the, what the experiences that people range from very physical to very emotional to quite spiritual. You know, all, all those are possible. Um, maybe I can back up and just describe the the kind of breath work that that I I teach most of the times. Again, that they're 
different kinds of breath work. Some are more physically activating, some are calming. Um, the, the breath that, that I do most often in big groups like the one you sat on is, is called conscious connected breathing. And it comes from a tra uh, tradition, you know, you may have heard of holotropic breathing, which is basically just connecting an inhale to an exhale, working on the inhale and then let, letting the exhale fall out. In the case of the breath work I do, golden air breath work, we do two inhales and then one exhale. So we fill up our belly, then we fill up our chest, then we let it go. And then we do that over and over again, a conscious connected breath. As we do that, what happens in the brain is really interesting. And what happens, you know, what you can feel. The cool thing about breath work, you don't have to believe in it, you'll just feel it. <laughs> so what we begin to experience as we do that breath is, and, and you know, the science, the science is still being done on this, exactly what's going on. But some, some is known, and, and what you can see in an, a brain scan is that the, the neocortex, the prefrontal cortex, specifically that part of the brain that's the newest part of the human brain, um, associated with sense of will, with language, with um, our so deep social connections. It's a part of the brain that asks us to behave, and, and you know, it's the critical mind. It's a great part of the brain, but it can be very active. As you can imagine, we're always kind of criticizing, we're always worrying, we're, we're, you know, it takes a lot to be a human. So what happens in this kind of breathing is the thought is that sort of gets distracted, that, that we're breathing in a way that that has something to do. We give it something to do and then it begins to kind of work on that. Meanwhile, the limbic brain, the older parts of the brain, the more primal brain, the subconscious brain stem starts to light up and starts to have more influence. And so in that place, um, things that are of our experience, of our human experience, you know, stuff from your past, maybe memories from your past, maybe trauma that you had, maybe experiences you haven't thought ab about in a while, or maybe just bodily memories, sensations, like you know, maybe you had a hurt ankle when you're 20 years ago, or things like that that haven't quite healed, or there's some part of them that wants to still be shaken up, still be healed and processed. That stuff tends to come up for processing in the breath work. So um, we find that we begin to heal trauma from our past, or we begin to see memories come up or we see people from our past we haven't thought about in a while or we may cry uncontrollably we may laugh we may make sounds all these things are possible as this kind of stuff comes up for processing and it uh like i said the 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 different ways that expresses are are so various it's kind of it's kind of awesome so you're you're just doing this like a two-part series and, and why is it the two-part series versus the one big and one out so call it a three-stage breath so in in out so fill up the belly fill up the chest and let go um so you're bringing in so typically you'd breathe in one in one out right and that is a that's a breath that we're all familiar with and you know we're, we're all pretty good at that I think that part of what we're doing in breathing this way is it's a little bit challenging. It's a little bit extra. There's research done, um, great research on flow states and, and what it is that creates a quality of flow, how we get into flow. And that requires doing something that's a little bit challenging, like meeting a challenge that's a little bit, you know, pushing your abilities, matched with a capability a strong capability, like you're, you're good at something, you have a, a talent for it or a knack for it, or you've worked at it. Well, we're all pretty good at breathing. And so when we meet a breath that is a little bit challenging, that's a little bit different than what we're used to, we might trigger that flow state that I was talking about, that, that signal in, in the brain that we can really like click onto some new co-pilot where we start coasting. And, um, and then the limbic brain lights up and does all that other wonderful stuff. So it's almost like part of your brain is sitting up there inside of your skull, hanging out there. And they, by breathing in this air, it's almost like 
fueling it and allowing certain maybe synapses to start firing that might have not fired in 20, 30 years and they could be all coming at. So it's almost like taking a, you know, a water hose and just putting it into your head and just wiping it all out of all the stuff that's been chilling there. Yeah, man. I've, I've heard it spoken about as a car wash for the insides. My buddy Rob Starbuck talks about that. Yeah, it's absolutely. It's a, it's a car wash for the insides, man. <laughs> and uh, it's quite remarkable. We also go to a, you know, it's a parasympathetic state that we go to, which is a restful digestive state. So we're, we're, it's an activating breath, but at the same time, over time, we're, we're actually landing in a state that is deeply restful. And um, so it's a very cool mix of things that are going on in, in your brain and in your body as you do this practice. Can you explain maybe one of the most gnarly experiences you've had just in all of your years of doing this that might have stood out amongst the others? Yeah, sure. I mean, in, in my own experience, I've had, you know, I've had... <sighs> Gnarly is a funny word for it because I've, I've just had such revelatory, beautiful experiences. I've certainly have some, had some challenging, you know, physical sensations when I first started. So one of the things that happens in breath work for, for those in your audience who've tried it before, you may be familiar with this. This is called tetany. This is, you may get a clenching in your hands, your feet, your lips might tense up, curl up. It's the weirdest thing in the world if you look down at your hands and they're clenched up like this you got what we call lobster claw and you know there's no other situation in the world where that is appropriate and in breath work that'll show up for over 50 percent of people will get some form of that so that tends to be something that can really show up as gnarly for people you know people get a lot of uh, pain even in in the hands and the arms and the extremities um, it's usually not fully painful. Some people do experience some pain and it's always temporary. So it always goes away. So the first time you do it, if you are not prepared for that, if you don't know it's coming, it can be especially challenging. So certainly I like to prepare people for, you know, tetany might come your way. But if, you know, I've seen, I've heard from people that have gone into one not knowing that was coming and they, you know, it freaks you out. If you look down and your hands are curled up, the first thing you think is I'm stuck like this. So you think you're, you know, your hands are forever going to be lobster claws. So that's freaky. <laughs> the freaky thought, you know? So, um, the first time I did it, I definitely had some full, full lobster action, but it was also accompanied, you know, the, the thought on why that happens, it's kind of the Eastern Western explanation, right? So um, Eastern rep uh, representation of it would, would, would deal with your meridians, your, your energetic meridians, your chakra system and how there's, you know, your energy's looping, you're not releasing, you're not allowing for the energy to flow fully. And some, some part of you is still clenching, still holding on. And then, you know, on the other end of the spectrum, it has to do with alkalinity and our, our body, uh, pH changing because of carbon dioxide. And, and so, you know, I think the truth is probably involves both of those things. And um, the, the, what is known is that it, it, you know, like I said, it does go away and no one ever leaves stuck like that. <laughs> but man, I've had some people, I've had just a few people really, you know, have scary experiences in breath work where they were, they didn't know what was happening and they kind of entered an altered state. And what tends to accompany that is um, people who are unwilling to go there, people who, who are resisting the experience. Have you ever heard of, you know, like a bad trip? Mm -hmm. uh, obviously you've mm -hmm. heard of it, but you know, one of the things that accompanies a lot of a, a bad trips are that they tend to happen more to people who, are resisting the experience. yeah and, and just just for people that don't know what a bad trip is he's referencing you know for example if you did like a hallucin hallucinogenic drug like acid or shrooms or something along those lines a bad trip represents exactly what it sounds like going south instead of going you know north and, and getting lifted <laughs> yeah so there there are very few bad trips in breath work but i've i've experienced a couple of them for very temporary you know just short periods of time um 
because they can bring up a ton of, you know, stuff. Like they can bring up trauma for people. Breathwork can be processing of big trauma. And so people should be prepared. They should choose that. You know, they should know that they're getting into that and that that might come. That said, there's usually some kindness around the experience, not just some. There's some, you know, our body wants us to be well. Our body wants us to heal. Our body does not want us to be traumatized or depressed or anxious. Or Our body spends full time every day trying to make us well and that is the one interest of our heart is to keep us lively that's the one interest of our lungs is to bring in clean oxygen and clarify it so when when our body really starts talking in breath work it's on our side and 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 when you accept that when you say okay you got me i'm i'm off on this journey and i'm starting to leave the ground you got two choices. One is to cling to the ground with everything you got. And the other is to give yourself to the wind. And, you know, 99% of people end up in the second camp because this work is so powerful and it, it tends to just feel good at some point. But there's 1% that clings, 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 and um, may have some challenge that, that, you know, have to shepherd them through. And then, and that can look pretty interesting. So you're going through you're going through years of experience in one session, right? So it's very therapeutic in that sense. Do some people just have an overnight success where it's like one session just almost they're a new person afterwards because they feel like they finally conquered something or do you think it takes a certain amount of consistency and stages? Yeah, I I'd, I'd say there's um there's no shortage of, you know, people that report it is like years of therapy in one session. I get that comment all the time. That was like, you know, I, I was in therapy for 10 years and I never had an experience like that was more powerful than those 10 years. That I do get those anecdotally quite often. So I'd be lying if I said that I didn't. That said, for some people, it is, um, it's not, you know, a whole lifetime of memories. For some people, it's just a lot of sensations and some, you know, transient thoughts happening and they're maybe even a little confusing or something, but it's always something. There's always something that moves. It's always, it's always in some way notable experience, a profound experience. And I would say for more often than not, it is um, a deeply moving experience for people. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not for everyone, you know, <laughs> I always say that it's not for everyone, but I think it's for a lot of people. So if I wanted to get into breath work, do you recommend a uh, two part sort of question here? Do you recommend starting with meditation, getting my foot in the door there and then getting into breath work? Or, and if I do want to do breath work, do I, can I just do it at my house without anyone here? Or do you think the group sessions are much more strong? Well, I love, I love the group sessions for um, the kind of conscious connected breath, breath that, that I'm talking about because, because we get to support each other. You know, ultimately, it's a, it's a, it really is in Congress with a group of people that we can you know, express in safety, and I think there's something cool about that. Um, or, or certainly at least with a guide. You know, for some people, they have a lot of stuff and they don't want to cry in front of a bunch of people. And, and that's perfectly reasonable, especially if someone's really dealing with a lot in their life and they know that this is probably going to be powerful work and it's probably going to bring up some stuff. Um, if that's you, I would say, you know, maybe a private guided breath work would be a great way to, to put your toe in the water. Um, or certainly one of these group sessions, any good breathwork facilitator will hold a good container, you know, that people are going to get emotional, people are going to express. And that's what's awesome, because then at the end, we get to talk to each other and, you know, and connect over over deep, vulnerable experience. Um, but to answer your question regarding, you know, this and meditation, again, man, I kind of think that that breathwork is if I wish I knew about breath work when I started meditating because now I'll always do some form of breath work before meditation. And that will help me to drop into a state where I feel like I can pay more attention um, to, you know, to what's going on inside. 
Yeah. And then does it take a while to really master what works for you? Because, you know, what works for you might not work for everybody and vice versa. Did you find that there's a certain like a way of going about it that has proved much more effective than anything else you've tried in the past? Yeah. I mean, I think different modalities work for different people. I think, you know, there, there is something relatively standard about the journey that we take people on which is that in in breathing this three-part, three-stage conscious connected breath, belly, chest, exhale. (sighs) When you do that, yeah, get after it. (laughs) When you do that for a certain amount of time, it's pretty predictable that you're going to have an experience, right? So that is relatively standard. And and I'll, I'll, you know, urge people to, to do that for 10 to 30 minutes, let's say. And that's usually a good range of time to have an experience with that. Um, and then there's other formats of breath work, like Wim Hof is great, you know, for, for breath retentions and, um, and then just box breathing. We can talk about box breathing. We can talk about breath work just to activate, you know, to get into a parasympathetic autonomic tone where you're just becoming more restful and letting your brain have a break. So, you know, it, it's kind of prescriptive in that way. I, I, I kind of play a la carte with breath work. So it depends how I'm feeling. If I want to get activated, I'll do one type of breath. If I want to go deep and, and, you know, process, I'll do the breath work that, that I teach. Dude, that it's so, it sounds so, I feel like people that know breath work and if you listen to the show, you've heard me say this again, it's like they have a superpower that they tapped into that most people just don't know about because I mean, it's popular in California, right? But like, you don't typically see these big group sessions of people, you know, yeah. getting yeah, off It's coming, and- man. It's coming. It's coming because first of all, I mean, breath, there's a breathwork studio in Philadelphia. Now there's, you know, they're popping up all over New York and, sanctum in in venice where where i teach a lot and my partner studio is um they're like we we're kind of doing the first breathwork specific studio in in the country i think we were one of the first people that that did that certainly but we're not going to be the last i mean it's spreading like wildfire and um and i think it's exciting man so we're all gonna have a superpower you know (laughs) that's what i want i love it man i i love the, the idea that somebody has one of these deep, impactful things that happen while they're doing this breath work, and it is so strong. You take somebody like your, yourself, for example, 20 plus years in the filmmaking industry, and almost like because you fall so in love with this experience and this deep inner peace that you find, that it leads you down towards, you know what? I want to help people with this. I want to build a business around this. I want to scale this so that people can benefit off of, off of the awesomeness. And I know you're all about just helping people like that gets you high, right? Like gets you seeing other people have those experiences. I mean, what a cool profession to be able to learn from for the rest of your life. I mean, you can be 89, 90 years old and you're still having that childlike enthusiasm, basically healing people through, through, you know, their own supply. Yeah, man, you're, and, and I would say what's even better is I'm just teeing people up to heal themselves, you know, like I, I, I'm just, you know, on my best days, just pointing a mirror and being like, check this out, check out what you can do, you know, and get in there. And I never know, you know, I cannot experience what people are experiencing internally. And because breathwork is so varied and so awesome, the responses people get, you know, it's just delightful to hear how people process their own stuff. You know, some people do it very matter of factly and they'll have like this, wow, I had this, this list of to do's come to me that I have to like, you know, call my mom and tell her this and then, you know, cut it off with that friend who is doing me no good. And and they'll come out with like almost like a to do list. Whereas other people have visions of colors and, and um, what you might call like a real psychedelic experience um, synesthetic experiences of music and color. And, and then other people are just like, I don't know what the fuck that was, but I know that my body feels crazy and just shifted some stuff. And I don't, I don't know what it means, but 
So I get to bear witness to that. And I get to kind of, um, you know, dialogue with people about the meaning of life. Honestly, when it comes down to it, it's like, we don't know what we're doing here, man. I mean, some of us have some theories and that's awesome. And, and uh, some of those theories are beautiful. But ultimately, like, we still don't, we still don't know how the brain works. We still don't know what, you know, what, what much of this means. And that's, that's cool. We get to kind of live it. You're living it. You're learning about yourself. You're going through this wild experience, like alongside each other. You're building crazy. And and the other thing is, is if you do go through one of these breathwork sessions with a stranger by the end of it, it's like, it's like that same feeling you get if you have a beer with somebody, right? It's like, yeah, oh, right. he's yeah, a, we she, did it. She, <laughs> yeah, she's a it. homie. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, totally, man. My my friend Sky went through the Wim Hof session with his friend Anton, and uh, my friend Anton, and we went, and he says he came out of there like twelve people, like best best friends. They'll always stay connected the rest of their life. Like just the the amount of experience they had by being very intentional with an intense breathing session. I mean, for them, they're jumping in freezing cold ice. That's Wim Hof's deal. Yeah. But just going through that experience and, and finding your breathing buddy is, is a big deal. Man, trauma bonding. It's, it's real good for you. I mean, we, we humans are made to do that. We create ceremonies where we get to do that. I mean, I, I've done, you know, the Wim Hof thing. I, 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 I actually guide my family through ice baths. And so we're going to hop in the lake here while I'm here a bunch of times um it's pretty chilly so yeah but that that's it's good for us we 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 definitely crave that shared experience and that the shared processing of experience is is really good for cohesion it's good for group cohesion and so I mean that's why war buddies are so in touch for the next 50 years you know um so yeah, I can't recommend it highly enough. I, I always say, bring your friends to breathwork. You get to be the one who, you know, you get credit for introducing them to this. <laughs> Plus you get to see them tweak out, which is really fun. We always have uh, dinner parties, well, non-quarantine times. And yeah. uh, I invite all my friends from Venice, Santa Monica over. We just have these bomb feasts and uh, it's awesome. So like, I would love for you to come in the future. Oh, hell yeah. And be great. I, I also think it would be a cool, unique thing that after everybody eats, has some fantastic food, good vibes. If we straight up did a breathwork session with like 25 people that might have never done it before. And like, all, all that sounds amazing, but we'll just do it before we eat because you don't want to do breathwork after you eat. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. That makes sense. Might come up. Oh. <laughs> So if, if I'm doing this at home, right, you said for your, for your method, right. And we don't have to go too deep into this. Cause I know this could be an entire hour, just kind of mastering that technique. But if I'm doing your basic technique of filling up my stomach, filling up my, my chest and then breathing out quickly, do you have a certain cue that, that you do it to, do you use a certain type of song and others like theta type of meditations and like that type of music, what should I be listening to, to help kind of, uh, ignite that that crazy experience yeah man it's a great question and it's actually something that i you know i could spend an hour on just choosing music for breath work but the the a couple things i would say one is that i'll start with music that is um first of all I'll just lay people out to nice meditative music just to decide to land i mean that's what i call the first part it's like we're we're deciding to be here and that's very important to make the choice and then kind of let shut off the outside world so that's like chill music you know and then you get in some east forest and stuff like that it's just like super chill and beautiful and then and then you might you know I, I'll, I'll bring in the breath belly chest exhale and it's connected and you got to work at it so when you get going it can be super challenging and so I like to bring in music that is motivating that music that has tends to have a beat to it tends to have some progression feel lively so i'll bring in some energetic stuff and um and and uh, you know it'll it'll get thumping and so really like we take off with some some fun like thumping music and then at some point in the experience there's there's really like an expansion that tends to happen like a, a dissolving of you know the, again that that 
prefrontal cortex, all the like the clingy critic brain starts to just like ease up a little bit and start to let go a little bit. And when we let go a little bit, it's nice to have music that does that too. So at that point, I look for stuff with a high dynamic range, like where we have we have very high notes and low notes and deep bass. And it's just kind of, so I'll play some classical. I'll play a lot of like African griot music. I'll play stuff with really interesting um, musicianship and tend to do very little words um, in the music because I want people to have their own experience. But uh, so, you know, and then I'll end with more of the meditative stuff. Once we have that journey, the last 15, 20 minutes will usually just be a guided visualization that's very chill. By then you've done all the work, so you're kind of relaxing. And, and um, at that point, your brain is so primed that you are so ready to accept these visualizations and to go on a, a journey. Um, so you kind of make it through the work and then you're in this whole other place where it's just utter relaxation and you're, you are so supple and, and ready for suggestion that <laughs> it's fun to plant good seeds at that time, you know? Your creative mind is just flowing because you're just like an open vessel of ideas. That's it. That's it. And you're, you're receiving. I mean, you're ready to kind of, it, it's, I feel like it's like you, you know, we all cling to these ideas about who we are, what we're doing here, all this, you know, we, we have a lot of, and, and our baggage and our past and our, you know, so at some point in this experience, we tend to let that go and be like, I don't know what I am. I just lost track of it. So I'm just going to be here and what, what's coming, what's coming in. And so there's an openness, an open quality. And in that open place, you can receive. Man, I could listen to this all day. I mean, <laughs> you need, your, voice, your message needs to get out to every human on the earth. I mean, someone make a deal with Headspace and have a Chris Keener section. Hey, man, I want to tell you about something. So we're creating an app. And uh, it's just about done. We're just working on iterating it, making it perfect, um, or at least, you know, pretty freaking awesome. But it is a breathwork app. It's called Lixir, L-I-X-I-R. And uh, we are super jazzed to be getting it out to the world. It's going to have full breathwork journey. So picture lighting up your app and having all the instructions you need, all the safety measures, and you can press play. And there's the music and there's my voice and you go on a full deep dive journey um, whenever you want to. And so we're so excited to get that out. So to your point, working on it, man. <laughs> wow. What, what, how, that's a big task right there. That's one yeah. of those tasks that you're like, you know what? I want to start an app. And you're like, oh, like it sounds so easy. Right. And then you start going in and you're like, wow, you're deep in a volcano of just so much work. Appreciate and, you saying that. And building it out and the development. And that reading goes my into emails. And then having to deal with developers that might not be in line with your vision and then spending way more money than you thought and then it not being perfect. Like that's just an undertaking. How has that process been for you? Yeah, I mean, you, you said it, man. <laughs> I think you covered it, <laughs> pretty much covered it. With the exception of I have an awesome team. So I'm working with, um, with my friend Leo who runs Sanctum in Venice, the, the best breathwork studio in the world guaranteed that place is just amazing leo curates it so beautifully and he's curated in the app with the same care so we're partnered on it and then our third partner is ryan who's an incredible app developer so we have we got a crack team and we're you know we're streamlining it and so it's just been awesome and then we're recording at conscious studios in venice and so that everything sounds amazing and yeah it's it's just awesome what have you guys been doing since uh quarantine to kind of continue the community How, has that been really tough on sanctum uh we've reinvented it leo really has has reinvented the mission of sanctum um to go global it's now sanctum world and the idea is to create content that will you know reach as you're saying, all the people in the world who need this, which is pretty much everybody. So we're working on making content that will reach a lot more people. And at the same time, it'll be a physical space. You know, we'll be opening back up as we can with the, you know, considerations and safety in mind. So TBD, man, but, but um, certainly pushing ahead and really excited about what's to come. 
Yeah, the future, that's insane when you start thinking about scale and actually having like success with that. And then you mix it in with, you know, YouTube channel and you're like driving in all this organic traffic because I feel like your face and your comedic background and your good attitude can really become sort of this icon inside of the space that like you're like right now I'm seeing you at for sure the, the lowest you'll ever be. And obviously you don't look at yourself as low. I'm just saying that you are, I seriously think that you'll become like the one of the top five leaders in this space. Thanks, man. I'm, I'm open to however I am used. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Just rip, yeah. rip, ripping through life. Yeah. Just ripping it up, man. <laughs> Surfing the waves. There it is. So I'm trying to just get into a routine. If I, what's your daily routine look like in terms of breath work and meditation? And, and can you kind of explain how that uh, you've developed that? Yeah, great question. So um, a, cu- a couple things are, are quite common in my daily routine. First and foremost is a simple um, slowing of my exhales and breathing through my nose. So we should all be breathing through our nose a lot more. That is rule number one. Our nose is a perfect instrument for breathing. A lot of immunity happens in our nose. Um, we, there, there are so many incredible. So we, we uh, pr- produce nitric oxide when we breathe through our nose, which is, um, is, helps build immunity. We also filter everything through the you know, particles and stuff like that as we breathe in and out. It also activates um, what's known as the parasympathetic autonomic nervous system. So we shift to a parasympathetic place. You can think of sympathetic as fight or flight or fight or freeze, flight or freeze, basically. So you're either like curling up or you're fighting or you're, you know, running away. That is a very activated response. And it's a temporary response. It's designed to activate when we are facing danger, right? Um, But we don't want it to be activated all the time. In today's world, we find that we are activated a lot of the time. There's a lot of reasons to that. Visual stimulus is part of it. A lot of the research being done on this is, but regardless, we are activated a lot. So we have a lever to control that, and it is our breath. And we can shift into a parasympathetic state, which is that rest and digest autonomic response, where we are then, you know, it's amazing what happens when we do that because then we have instead of all the blood flowing to our organs that help us to run and fight and freeze, the blood can flow freely to our creative brain and we can kind of chill and all these other wonderful healing properties happen in our body. Um, you know, when we're fully parasympathetic, we're asleep, we are fully rested. So, but, so we want to stay there as much as possible. You asked a simple question. Here's my long winded answer. So in slowing the exhales and breathing through your nose, you are staying more parasympathetic in tone. So you can just think about it when you're breathing, am I, you know, people usually say take a deep breath if you're facing something, you know, or if you just had a freak out. Actually what you wanna do is slow your exhales and breathe through your nose. That will calm you down. That is the way to calm you down. So I think, you know, first thing in my daily practice is I will walk around being aware of, am I breathing through my mouth or my nose? And if I'm breathing through my mouth, I'll shut my mouth, start breathing through my nose. And if I'm feeling super activated and I want to calm down, I'll slow my exhales. So that's one. Two is I love um, breath retentions doing, uh, so I'll do some form of similar to a Wim Hof technique where I take a, you know, 30 to 40 breaths and do a couple of breath retentions. Um, you can look that up if you want. Um, we, we have designed a flow in our app that is around breath retentions. It's going to be awesome. Breath retention as in holding your breath? Holding your breath, exactly. So you hold empty with no air in your chest and no air in your belly, and then you hold full. And then that's one round of breath retentions. Um, and people can certainly look up that technique. And, and then lastly is, you know, once or twice a week, I'll do a deep dive breathwork session, which is the breathwork that I teach. And that, and that depends. Sometimes I'll go for, you know, I'll do it once a month. Sometimes I'll do it every day for a month. So it, I do that as I'm called to it. Interesting. 
the yeah. retention because when I even when I do just my my rookie meditation, I'll go like ten minutes like breathing through my mouth, breathing through my my. I'll switch in between. Uh, not but now you got me like I gotta go through my nose, damn. Um, but I'll switch. But then I'll do that at the end of like that ten minutes. I'll just go one big exhale out and I'll hold that for like a minute or two. And that is when I feel the most crazy tingling sensation inside of my body. Yeah. 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 At that point you burn off all your CO2 and you can, you can, you know, you can absolutely do those through your mouth. Like when I do the, you know, a Wim Hof breathing or the flow breathing, or I'll, I'll do that through my mouth. Cause you're just bringing in a ton of oxygen. You're just moving out CO2. So you're actually changing your pH, your CO2 level goes down. And so you can hold your breath longer. People think of breathing as, as a way to get in oxygen. There's another way of thinking about breathing. It's really just about regulating our carbon dioxide. So when our carbon dioxide um, gets too high, then we want to breathe in again. Interesting. Regulating your CO2. Yeah, your CO2 will build up as you hold your breath. And so you'll need to take another breath in to fill up and lower your co2 to regulate that with oxygen do you recommend at the end of that deep breath after after you do the retention and you let it all out like say you hold it for like two minutes then you take one huge breath after and then you hold that as long as you can as well um you don't have to hold that as long as you can i'll usually hold that for about 30 seconds or so got it just to fill up with oxygen it can feel nice to hold it longer so you just feel whatever the flow is, whatever. Yeah, you're- yeah, totally. <laughs> if you're doing a, yeah, we could get into the weeds on the nerd out on this stuff. But the, I think the main thing um, to, to think about is, is uh, are you using your breath to control your state? You know, we tell kids to go over there, sit down and take a deep breath. But how often do we do that? How often do we? coach ourselves in that way and we have the ability to really take control of the biggest lever of our whole response to the world our bodily response just in breathing just in breathing through our nose slowing the exhales Um, and that that's a great start breathing through the nose slowing the exhales can you exhale through your mouth yeah, you can, but you're, you, it's just more of a regulation when you're breathing through your nose. Got it. That makes sense. Yeah, it seems like when you breathe through your mouth, it's like you got this giant, you know. You're just dumping out CO2. So you're, you know, trying to stay regulated. So it's, it, it, we have a perfect lever for all of this, which is just to keep it in the nose. If you keep breathing through your mouth, what happens is you'll go start going more uh, into that sympathetic activated state. That's interesting. And then when you get lobster and you're, re- and you're very coherent that you have lobster, you can just stay in that lobster state for, for a while and have no negative impacts. Yeah. <laughs> I would listen to your body. Right. At some point, you're probably, you know, I don't coach people to do this for f- five hours at a time. Right. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Well, this is amazing. How stoked are you about this? I, I'm, I'm fired. You know, it's like when you meet people that have these ideas for a business or something, and sometimes you're like, wow, like yeah, I can tell he's stoked, but like I might not be that stoked for him in, in cohesion. But when I met you and I, I see what you're about, like people need to hear what you're doing. They need to try this at home. Everyone listening to the audience, you got to try breath work. Like if you don't, you're just missing out on potentially something super awesome that's free and getting high on your own supply. I mean, that's the name of this podcast. That's how it's going down. (laughs) Everyone needs to give it a shot because it's like, again, if you tap into that true, you know, mind body connection with your breath, the the potential is limitless. Your happiness is better. Your stress is better regulated. And we all know living on this giant orbital, you know, circle, which some people will say is flat in the middle of time and space is tough, right? Anything to do to take the edge off without popping a Xanax is freaking good to me. Yeah, baby. That's it, it man. <laughs> That's it. You can be my hype man. Oh, man. I'd love it. I'm telling <laughs> you, we're going to do this dinner party next, and we're going to schedule it in as a full-fledged breathwork session. I'm going to invite 
all of our fit like squad and we're gonna have like 30 40 people and we're gonna do an amazing event and then it'll be like good vibes good food all the all the above but I, that would be so sweet and i will videotape it and document it and share it on the page so everybody listening to this knows it was it was it was epic i'm trying to make some toes curl over here oh yeah man it's there's nothing more fun than watching your bodies curl up <laughs> <laughs> so, so chris how can people find more number one tell us when people we can expect this app and also how can people follow you on social media and whatnot to kind of get more yeah, absolutely. So lixirapp.com, L-I-X-I-R app.com to sign up to for beta when we do release the app so that you're first on the list. Um, and then my site is Golden Air Breathwork. That's my name. That's what I go by. And um, at the Chris Keener is my Insta. And yeah, that's that's where to find me. I'm always doing stuff. I do two sessions a week, two breathwork Zoom sessions currently. I call it Let's Breathe Through This Together. This is, you know, we're all need to take a good deep breath right now. And when are do, those? Those are Tuesday, Thursday, 5 p.m. PST. And then I do Monday, Wednesday, Friday mornings, IG Lives. So those are just those are just quick tips and tricks, you know, to answer your question about daily breathwork rituals. Come find me on Instagram at the Chris Keener and Monday, Wednesday, Friday, we go into those on 9 a.m. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> I'm fired up. Awesome, man. I'm putting it in the calendar and uh, I appreciate you. Till next time. Likewise, Mr. Ian. Thank you for listening to another episode of Len Jones Party of Two. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review and subscribe to stay up to date on our new episodes. And remember, hope is not a strategy. Keep making moves. Till next time, peace.